the children are all buried down in that section over there where there's no, where there's no markers at all. Mike Kakaji walks through a cemetery for the Xinhua Residential School. This one here, he was a child at the Xinhua home. But there are two students who never even made it here. The boys drowned in the early 1900s. In a pond behind the school, their bodies lost forever, their names submerged beneath the weight of years. It's like a duty. Who looks after the ones that passed away that have no identity as children? We took it upon ourselves. Decades later, the boy's story surfaced in memories, preserved by this video from the 1981 Shinwok reunion. There was two Indian boys drowned, mm -hmm. and um, they tried to get them out, but it was a bottomless lake, because they lost two Indian students to it. And he was told that he couldn't... Researcher Edward Sadowski has searched for their names. Many of those records uh, for the residential school for Shinwok, uh, especially a list of the students that went here between uh, 1907 and 1939 uh, no longer existed. He did find passing mention of two girls from Garden River, First Nation, who fell sick and died, their names also missing. So uh, there's a mystery now that uh, involves two additional uh, students. These children from Shinwok are among the thousands who died in the care of these institutions whose names were erased as Canada periodically destroyed reams of residential school files. About 4,000 children have so far been identified, many thousands more still waiting to be found. Sadowski says there is one place no one has yet looked to find these names, the government's Indian status register. That information has never been uh, made public. Suzanne Lyon retired in January from the Federal Indigenous Services Department. She knows the type of information the register holds. I think that it's a really valid source of information that could be helpful in finding out who some of these children were. But privacy laws prevent researchers from combing through its records. Shingwok survivors say the government needs to open it up. It's not a political issue. It's not a legal issue, it's a human rights issue. If you've got the ways and means, help us get closure on this whole aspect of these children that never came home, then, then do it. Children who remain hidden by history. Hmm. So Jorge, what is the potential for movement on this question of, of opening the register? Well, up till now, this issue has been governed by privacy which is understandable. There's personal, sensitive information in the register about every single individual who's deemed to be status First Nation. Now the government says it may open these files just to crack, maybe for historic cases, and let people try to track down these long-lost children and reconnect them with their communities. This may be a step forward for those who've been searching for years but have nothing to go on. Andrew? All right, Jorge, thank you very much. Thank you.